Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and today we're going to look at Tiny Frontiers, a minimalist science fiction RPG. Written by Alan Barr and published by Gallant Knight Games, Tiny Frontiers is a stripped-down sci-fi rule set that GMs can attach to any setting that they like, ranging from Firefly to Aliens to Robotech to just about anything. The game uses the tiny d6 rule system, which means everything is rolled using one to three six-sided dice, so there's no real math to it. Now, for full transparency, I was given a PDF copy of the game by the publisher in exchange for an honest review. Now, first things first, let's look at the cover. It's pretty lackluster. We have an image of space, but nothing about it conveys emotion or action or anything that would want to make me pick this up if I randomly saw it in a game shop. The rules themselves are pretty short. This is a printing that I made from the PDF copy, so I printed this myself. It does not look as good as their professionally printed copies. This comes to 41 pages. Now, the book is actually much longer than that. The actual book comes closer to 140 pages, and I'll get to the rest of what's in the book shortly. But the rules to play the entire game are pretty much of these 41 adorable half-sized little pages. They really got into the whole tiny theme here. Now, it's my opinion that the only way to really review a game is by actually running it. And that's what I did. Having no experience with the game except for maybe a quick read-through, and my players having zero experience with it at all before we started, I ran Tiny Frontiers. And spoiler, it went beautifully. So what I'm going to do is comment on the game from a Game Master's perspective. And I'm Jack, the NPC. I'm going to lay this out to you from a player's point of view. What is that? Are, are you wearing a cape? Oh, you betcha. Space cape. Very fashionable in the future. Yeah, I, I really doubt that. I like you no know fashion. Just trust me here. Space cape. All right then. Now, the game offers several options for character races. Some are pretty standard. Humans, genetically modified humans, and then your robotic droids called autoborgs. We also get a nice selection of several more non-standard races. Each has their own benefit and are pretty evenly matched. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You know, it says here that the autoborgs only have night vision that extends for 30 feet. I mean, what is up with that? We had better night vision technology in the 80s. Obviously, after all of those robot uprisings, like you know, the Cylons and Skynet and all that, we were like, okay, I tell you what, we're going to let you have dark vision, but only for 30 feet, huh? Try taking over the world now, Toaster. I mean, obviously, this is some sort of punishment because we used feet instead of meters. And in the far future, where we have mastered space travel, the only reason to be using the Imperial system is as a form of punishment. Once the player has chosen their race, they get to choose their three special traits, you know, what abilities they really excel at. The list of options comes to about 40 once you've added in all the cybernetic options, and really the hardest part is just narrowing it down to a player's top three. I really dug this aspect. Next comes weapons. There are three categories of weapons, melee, light ranged, and heavy ranged. Players choose which of the three categories that they're proficient in and which weapon inside each category that they've mastered. Now, coming from a gaming background loaded with millions of weapon choices, this was a bit odd for me. In keeping with the streamlined approach to the system, it works surprisingly well. My only real beef here is that there is almost no difference between light-ranged weapons and heavy-ranged weapons. My suggestion is that you limit the range of a light range weapon to, let's say, 30 meters, and then, you know, step it down one difficulty increment for every 30 meters after that. And then with your heavy ranged weapons, you give it that full line of sight range that they have now. Now, I know they're trying to keep the rules light, but I feel that this one small addition would really streamline it and make a definite difference between these two weapon types. After weapons comes gear and equipment. Once again, it's very streamlined and short, but personally, I wish they would have given us just a little bit more as to possible gear and the prices for possible gear. Being that this game is perfect for grab-and-go players or introducing new players to RPGs, a little bit extra here would help players visualize what their options are and give them goals as to what they could purchase with any of their loot they get from adventuring. After gear, we get some examples of the weird alien technology available, called Xenotech. 
These are like the strange magic items that a character can find in a normal RPG. I really dug this, and the Xenotech is pretty fun. Next we get starships, and I really love the way they did the ships in this game. Essentially, each ship has six primary systems. You have engines, shields, weapons, scanners, etc. But then the players that are aboard the ship get to choose what upgrades they want those systems to have. And then the player that chose that upgrade is now the specialist in charge of that system. Such as if I said, you know what? I want to upgrade our weapons to these sweet, sweet plasma cannons. That means that I am now the gunner that's in charge of those cannons. And when our ship gets into a fight, I'm the one that gets to roll the dice to see if we hit the bad guy. Or if I said, you know what? I want to upgrade our reactor to this sweet, sweet power core. That now means that I'm the engineer, and I'm in charge of diverting the power to all the different systems as the ship needs them. That means I get to be, you know, freaking Scotty and, you know, give it all she's got. This setup gives a sense of ownership and responsibility to each member of the ship's crew. So now when you have those space battles, it's not just all your players sitting around watching one or two pilot characters make all the roles that can determine if they live or die, but each character is in a team effort and everybody is involved in that battle. I absolutely love it. Now, there are two things that I wish they had done differently. First would be add ship speed to the list of attributes. That way, if you're doing space battles, you can have ships you know, chasing each other and try to get away and outrun each other. Let you upgrade the ship's thrusters and allow you know, one or two more hexes or whatever your sense of length is for the space battle. Even then, during our playtest of a ship battle, it went amazingly well and we had a lot of fun. The other thing I'd like to have is a list of prices for upgrades and repairs to a ship. That way, if a party gets into battle and takes damage or maybe harvests some upgrades from a ship that they've destroyed, that way they can see how much they could have to install it or how much they could possibly sell it for on you know, a black market or that sort of thing. This is a tiny little thing. And personally, I'd like to see this in some sort of future expansion at some point. Next we have Mecha, your giant robots like Battletech or Voltron or many more. These work a lot like starships and how they can be customized and the system they have for it looks like a lot of fun, but we didn't have enough time for it in our test run so I can't really rate how well it works. However, Gallant Knight Games has released Tiny Frontiers, Mecha, and Monsters that can be used as either a standalone game or as just an expansion onto the normal Tiny Frontiers game, so that's pretty cool. The final part of the rules is the micro settings. As I said, Tiny Frontiers is a blank slate sort of game, allowing GMs to create any world that they want. It's about 41 pages. But then they followed it up with 94 pages that feature 16 unique setting concepts, each written by a different author. This is amazing. I love it. However, I personally would have given up one or two of those snapshot settings for just a little bit more of the core game, namely some expansions on gear, uh, pre-written characters, ships, mecha, you know, so maybe some more examples of playing, like, you know, if in this situation, this is how it works. The game is minimalist, but I feel that examples can help game masters understand the rules and the full potential of the game even a little bit more. Maybe even add a short pre-written scenario with objectives and obstacles and NPCs would have been a good idea. Now, a pre-written scenario is still possible. Hopefully Gallant Knight Games will release one or maybe even a collection of adventures in the future. The last thing we need to talk about is the character sheets. The sheets for both players and starships are available for free download. They come in black and white and in brilliant Technicolor. They're pretty cut and dry. However, my problem with them is that the background, especially on the color sheet, makes it very difficult to use with a pencil. So what I did is with a little Photoshop, I whited out the areas for my players to write in, making them much more useful. So, now we've talked about the rules, let's discuss how they play. After my initial reading of the rules, I created an NPC character, just to familiarize myself with the process. And then I sat down with two veteran gamers who have never used this rule system before. And it worked beautifully. We went from, so what's this game about, to having made our characters, upgraded our ship, and actually playing the game in just 20 minutes. I mean, I've played board games that took longer to get set up and get everyone versed in the rules. This game is sleek. It was a lot of fun. 
we had a few moments where we had to stop and open up the rules to double check things like healing and ship on ship combat but for all of our first game with the new system that is extremely good now would i play this as a long-term campaign using the tiny frontier system no uh, for me i feel that a longer campaign we'd want a more detailed system that allowed for character skill improvement However, there are a few instances which I would definitely recommend this. First, if you're looking at introducing new players to RPGs, this system is great for getting them into the game without bogging them down in a mountain of rules and a lengthy character creation process. Once they've got the general feel for tabletop gaming, that's when you can begin you know, easing them into more elaborate systems. Next, Tiny Frontiers is perfect for scratching that little itch, you know, and you just got a bit of a hankering for a sci-fi game, like you just watched the new Star Wars movie, or you just binged watched all of Battlestar Galactica, and you're like, you know what? I want to be on an away team for a bit. This lets the players go ahead and get that out of their system without having to start an entirely new large system and have to commit themselves to learning all the rules and all that crap, and by the time they get them down, that itch is gone. So if you play Tiny Frontiers, you get to play the game, one or two adventures, it's out of your system, and then you can go back to what you were playing before. Overall, while I wouldn't use this as my primary gaming system, Tiny Frontiers is a lot of fun, and I'm really happy to have it in my arsenal for any one or two session adventures. You can find it on Drive-Thru RPG, and it's definitely worth checking out. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a like. If you want to see some more of our reviews and videos, you can just hit that little subscribe button over there. Until next time, heroes, you have a great day.